Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Habitual Line Crosser, and this is my top five air defense systems all throughout history. This is a really hard list for me to come up with. I will be totally honest with you because in the spirit of transparency, one of them at least is not American. And I'm going to be totally fair with you because it's one of the most iconic weapons ever used throughout history. So let's go ahead and go down the list. Starting at number five, we have the American Nike Hercules. Nike Hercules in more than 500 test and training firings has demonstrated an amazing ability to seek out and destroy various targets from about 1,000 up to more than 150,000 feet in altitude. The Nike Hercules was a significant upgrade from its predecessor, the Nike Ajax, which was smaller, only had a single booster. The Nike Hercules was much larger, and it had four boosters, but this is for a very specific reason. While it could be outfitted with a conventional warhead, this thing had between a 2 and a 20 kiloton W-31 nuclear warhead. During the peak of the Cold War, the Nike Hercules was used to mainly deter Russians, because we realized at one point in time that they had more planes, bombs, missiles, and everything than we had air defense systems for so the american solution being that what we are is the way we are we decide that well if we have one missile go up and hit one plane and it has big enough explosion to eliminate all planes then we really don't have to worry about having that many missiles now the u.s is known for constantly innovating with everything that they do so the nike ajax came around and it was small and it had kind of a bit of a fuel issue the the liquid fuel inside of there it had to be very carefully moved because if you accidentally bumped it too hard, it could ignite or explode. This is a bit of an issue, especially when you're deploying weapon systems to combat. So around the 1950s, the United States government was like, hey, we need something solid state fuel. And they tested it for the first time. And this actually started to create the Nike Hercules program. It was actually changed from the Nike one to the Nike Hercules when they had a successful launch of it. It was such an effective system and was so widely produced for the United States. They had over 200 Nike Hercules sites throughout the world, including Okinawa. We had them in all over the U.S. We had them in various little islands here and there. Like, they were all over the place. Many of these Nike Hercules sites are still available to be seen today and just aren't in use anymore. The Nike Hercules stayed in production from around the 1960s until the late 1980s when it was replaced by Hawk for a short period of time and then it was later replaced by the Patriot air defense system. So let me set the stage for you. You are communism, and you've decided that you don't like the United States because they're pretty much better at everything than you are. Uh, shout out to my friend, the, uh, the fat electrician, for go ahead and uh, going on that rant. I love that man. He's, he's a beautiful human. And the United States goes, okay, fuck you. We don't like the way you do things, so we're going to design this missile. We have one missile, and it does pretty well, but uh, let's just do it more missile or gooder, right? So they take this thing and out of nowhere, you're not paying attention. And three years later, the United States comes out with something that is 41 feet long. It has an 11 feet wingspan. It travels at Mach 4, has a flight ceiling of 100,000 feet and can reach you 90 miles away from them. That is one of the most terrifying things you could ever come across as a communist in the modern era. But the U.S. didn't just stop there. We decided to continue to improve upon, upon this, and we eventually created the Nike Zeus, which actually never went into production, because it, if you've ever seen one, it, it looks honestly like a small Saturn V rocket. Um, it was eventually replaced by Hawk, and then Hawk was eventually replaced by the U.S. Patriot system. Number four. This goes out as one of the most iconic american air defense systems that have ever been designed and i love it just because of what it does and how it came about the m45 quad mount so as anyone you've ever talked to in the military might tell you the god's gift to the united states military was the m2 and is the m2 heavy barrel 50 caliber machine gun it has been used for almost as long as the buff has been around Oh, I'm sorry. Did I say almost? No, I mean like a lot, lot longer. The M2 Heavy Barrel 50 caliber machine gun is based off of the M1919 machine gun from Browning as well. They just took a 30-06 and said, fuck that. Let's do it in 50 cal because America. The M250 Cal originally had a water-cooled barrel and it had a lightweight tripod and everything came with it. It weighed like over a thousand pounds. So eventually they lost the water-cooled barrel, put a heavy barrel on top of this bad boy, and it has been used consistently from the 1930s to 
Well, I saw one in an arms room last week. So they're still around and they will still be around. Probably it's going to be nothing left but the buff, the 50 cal, Keith Richards, and Ozzy Osbourne. That's all that's going to be left after World War III. Originally, the M45 quad mount was set on the back of the M13 multiple motor carriage. It's been mounted on tank chassis. It's been in use for a very, very long time. They have tow behind versions. They have truck versions. They've even tried putting it on a... Um, a uh, deuce and a half turns out the two and a half ton chassis really wasn't enough because if you turned it backwards and fired it you could drive the truck at around 15 miles an hour because i don't know if you know this the recoil on 450 cals is is pretty brutal so a single 50 cal produces around 450 to 550 rounds per minute per 50 cal so let's go ahead and do some fucking freedom math here each one of these things could unleash between 1,800 and 2,200 rounds per minute per four-stack gun carriage. That's a lot of lead. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. You got to understand, like, the greatness of any system is its multiple variable uses. That being said, what do I mean by that, right? They were all used all through World War II. These things were a huge component of things like the Battle of the Bulge, right? Like, they were just straight putting in fucking work. And then, of course, they participated and were pretty much the, the sole system that kept the Ludendorff Bridge alive. We may do a video about that one later, the Battle of Remagen at the Ludendorff Bridge. Long story short, uh, the Americans took a bridge because fuck you, Germany. We're going to get across that Rhine one way or another. Germans tried to blow it. Germans failed at blowing it. America said, we need to protect this bridge. Luftwaffe said, we're going to fuck up that bridge. And America said, no, you're not. And the Luftwaffe lost 106 planes in a several days uh, going against the quad mount 50 cal. Now, the only reason the U.S. and other countries stopped using the quad mount 50 cal is not because it wasn't a good air defense system anymore. It's because the development of jet aircraft. They were moving so quick that by the time you got line of sight with them, you'd have to fire behind you just to get a chance at the incoming aircraft. So if you read certain sources, it'll tell you it was replaced by the VADS, the Vulcan Air Defense System, which I have talked about previously. I love the Vulcan Air Defense System, but it's never really done air defense shit. It was born too late to shoot down prop planes and too early to really be of use to anyone else. Although the VADS did prove very useful in the um, in Panama, where they used them as point and convoy defense, and they just pretty much bullet hosed into everything that was out there. Number three. And again, we go back to World War II, and for those of you who are World War II junkies, you're going to know exactly why I picked this. And no, it's not American. And I don't feel good about the fact that it's not American, but game recognizes game. The 8.8 centimeter Flak 18, 36, 37, and 41, also known as the German 88. The German 88 is one of the most iconic weapons throughout history, and yes, it was a wonderful, phenomenal flak weapon. So much so that when we started actually capturing these things in World War II, the United States needed a big bore air defense weapon, and we started like, hey, uh, let's figure out how these Germans did this shit. So we stole a shit ton of German 88s, and we started reverse engineering how they emplaced, because during this time, originally, America was using our three-inch gun. Decent gun! Until it just wasn't. I'm sorry. It just wasn't a good gun. I, I got to like the German 88 is just better in every way. Right. So it took 15 people around 55 minutes to put together and in place one of these three inch guns. And then when they were firing, they had a very low ceiling a, a, around a mile is as high as they could shoot. So all the Luftwaffe and all the, the Empire of Japan ever did was just fly above that and drop their bombs higher. And now Americans were sitting ducks. The German 88, on the other hand, happened to be able to go. Oh, for a ground target, 16,000 yards. And then for an air target, 26,000 feet is their effective ceiling. During World War II, that puts you in the engagement envelope of anyone trying to drop personnel, trying to drop bombs, trying to freaking strafe you with gunfire. That made this a fucking devastating weapon. At 15 to 20 rounds per minute, this thing was just a a bullet hose when it came to heavy duty artillery and if you were on the winning side over top of the losing side during world war ii you happen to find yourself at the hands of the german 88 this weapon was so useful they put it on tank destroyers they put it in the tiger one they put it in the tiger two the german 88 will go down in history as one of my favorite air defense systems that's why we're going to go ahead and put it at number three on this list number two this is one we've talked about recently, and I'm going to go ahead and bring it up. The Aegis. The Aegis. We don't even know how the hell to pronounce it anymore. 
Aegis is the single best combat management system known to mankind. The Aegis happens to be a, it's not a system, it's not just a one thing like, boom, here, this is a picture of the Aegis. It's not. It is a system of systems. Everything in that airspace can talk to each other. So when you send this thing with an American carrier group somewhere, all of those radars are talking to each other. Aegis can control fires off of every single one of them, telling them where things are and how to engage them. You want to fire missiles off of that boat from this boat? That's fine. Aegis has that shit covered. Oh, by the way, is there a, is there a fast mover out there the F-35 can go ahead and take care of? Yeah, you want to go ahead and get an air picture of that and send a standard missile two at it? Yeah, that's fine. Send it up in the air. The Aegis is going to pass the fire firing data to the F-35, who is then going to guide that standard missile two into its target. You can do the same with Sea Sparrows. You can do the same thing with SM-6s, SM-3s. I don't know if you can guide those off of uh, air platforms, but SM SM-3s are more kind of the uh, mid-range ballistic missiles because you can shoot down missiles. You can shoot down drones. You can shoot down uh, planes. You can shoot down helicopters. If it flies, it fucking dies when it gets near an American Aegis system. With a maximum detectable unclassified range of 310 kilometers, let's go ahead and convert that to freedom units, that is 192.6 miles that it can see you if you're coming towards the Aegis system. Let's go ahead and just make this a little more interesting. That happens to be 3,379.2 football fields. I went ahead and looked it up. I'm not a football guy, but Tom Brady leads the world apparently I, I just looked up who has the most passing yards in nfl and apparently it's tom brady who has over uh 89,214 passing yards that means 892 yards that means Aegis can fuck you up further than tom brady has ever passed a football in his fucking career and last but certainly not least and of course you guys had to see this one coming number one is the patriot air defense system <laughs> And it's because I know more about that system than, than you'll find on the fucking internet. Like, that's the thing. I, I, I talk about a lot of air defense systems because it's like, well, this is what I read on the internet. This is what I read on the internet. This is what I read on the internet. But Patriot, Patriot, I know. Like, I have to be like, hold on, let me Google that before I tell you what that number is. So the Patriot air defense system came around in the 1970s and originally it was designed for anti-aircraft. Well, fast forward to 1991 and we were in Saudi Arabia and a bad person decided they were going to throw missiles into Saudi Arabia and we had nothing else to throw at it. So they're like, uh, try and shoot it down with the Patriot system. It wasn't very good. It was around a 25% efficiency, but this took Raytheon, Lockheed Martin, all these companies. And they're like, mm, you know, you might be onto something here. Let's, let's see if we can figure this shit out. Come back in 2003, over 90% of projectiles that were thrown at American forces were shot down by American Patriot. It is a really, really good system. Like, the missiles, don't get me wrong, they're fucking high speed as shit, right? So, Pac-2 interceptors travel at, well, Pac-2 and Pac-3, unclassified speed is Mach 4. That's what you're going to get. Um, Pac-2, you can have four of them per launcher. Pac-3, you can have 16 of them per launcher. Pac-3 MSE, which stands for Missile Segment Enhancement, you can fit 12 of those per launcher. Missile Segment Enhancement is strictly designed to bridge the gap between THAAD and Patriot. That is Terminal High Altitude Area Defense or area air defense. I, I'm not THAAD certified. THAAD guys, help me out on this one. Uh, THAAD can only shoot so low. Patriot can only shoot so high. So we created a new missile to close that gap. Overlapping coverage. Now nobody can get through. The Patriot system has been used in Desert Storm, it's been used in uh, Iraq, it's been used all over the world. A lot of NATO allies have it, the United Arab Emirates has it, Saudi Arabia has it, Kuwait has it, Qatar has it, Bahrain has it. Every time the United States is willing to sell a Patriot system, somebody wants to get their hands on it because they know what the system is capable of. Right now on the fields of Ukraine, we're going to go ahead and splash up a uh, picture of somebody's scoreboard here. And I will tell you, uh, that's that's not even... That's not even what everything that has been hit. That's a small fraction. You're finding out that the system is really, really that good. The Patriot Air Defense System, the radar alone, can can track and identify over a hundred, unclassified, over a hundred targets, or excuse me, 100 targets at a time. That's exactly 100 targets at a time. Uh, that's what it can track and identify. Um, the Patriot system has a whole slew of other bells and whistles that it's capable of. And this is all the stuff that I'm allowed to know, but I tell you right now, I would love to dig into things like the Aegis. Like if I can get on board a Arleigh Burke class destroyer and go talk with the, the radar heads for a little while, I would be very, very excited about that. Um, so 
That's my list of the top five air defense systems that are out there. Please let me know what you think of those things. And if I missed anything you want me to talk about, I do want to dig into NASAMs. I don't know enough about those. I've been a lot of you in my comment section. You're like, what about the NASAM? What about the NASAM? What about the NASAM? I don't know much about it. I need to dig into the NASAM. As always, do not give into the 22 a day. Every single one of you are amazing. And I will see you guys right here next time. By the way, I went ahead and set something up. And if you want to support, please go to habituallinecrosser.com and support the channel. See you guys next time. Play me out.